All right, so um, today we're gonna demo the spending money sheet, which is among our top 10 most popular Tiller Money Labs templates. Um, it's basically a very simple uh, approach to month to month to month uh, budgeting. Um, and it allows you to budget for non-discretionary spending and track what's left for everything else in the month. Uh, so we're gonna start by opening up the Tiller Money Labs add-on and installing this, this uh, template. One thing that's cool about this template is that it doesn't require um, you build it on top of a foundation template. It really just needs a transaction sheet and a category sheet. The category sheet doesn't even, I'm, I'm demoing in one with the, uh, all the budgets over on the right, but this isn't even required for this because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, connect to that data. Um, so I am going to go to add a solution and scroll down to the spending uh, money template here. If you haven't done this before, um, there's a ton of solutions here in Tiller Money Labs that you can install very easily. Another cool feature about Tiller Money Labs is that it keeps all these up to date. So if we make improvements, you'll see um, that, that you have a template out of date and you can use this tool to install an updated version. So right now it's adding the spending money template into my spreadsheet. You can see it here. And um, we're going to go through and, and set it up. So in this category, so effectively these are going to be the categories that we budget for and here are our, our budget um, estimates for each month. The dropdown, oh, I didn't mean to do that. The dropdown pre-populates with all of your categories. Um, so one way to do this, most probably the way most people are doing this is you can put in rent and, and, uh, and put in a number. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a hack that makes it quick and easy. I am going to delete this and just go get all my categories from here. Copy, and then I'm gonna come back in here and do paste as values. So basically I'll just have all my categories here. And what I'm going to do from here is with this tool, uh, it's really best to just set it up for the categories that are fixed every month or things that you really know you have to budget for. So I'm gonna go through and, and uh, first sort this. I used to doing this on quite such a small screen, but data sort range, I got them in alphabetical order now, and I'm just gonna delete the ones that I don't think are um, things that I wanna budget for, the effectively the discretionary category. So I'm gonna delete this one, uh, this one, coffee is important, so of course we'll budget for that. Go down to groceries, gym membership, it's a little bit of a discretionary choice, but we're gonna budget for it because it's a, maybe a, a, a fee that we have to pay every month, it's an obligation. Um, go down to paycheck keep the rent and uh, go down to here. So here's what's left. These are the categories I'm gonna budget for. Again, I'm gonna do a sort just to get these in alphabetical or get these kind of grouped. And now I'm gonna show you another little trick with this template. Right now it defaults. You can see there's a formula here that sets it to today. Um, and typically how you wanna use this, this uh, spreadsheet or this template is to basically always have it running for today. So it's pulling in the latest month. It's showing you kind of what's left to spend this month. But um, one thing you can do here is we're gonna, we're gonna remember, this is just a simple formula. We're gonna put it to last month by overwriting this formula. And um, what that does for us is it shows us the spending in each of these categories from the previous month. And this allows us to really easily set up the budget. So I'm gonna go through and just do that real quick. Say I overspent on groceries last month. I don't wanna spend that much every month. Um, ooh, I made a mistake, hold on. 40, 100, gym membership, 60, uh, household, household. Okay, got it. Um, so this, this, in this way, I can basically put in values that were pretty close to on target for last month. And now I'm gonna set this back. Remember the formula was just that, puts it to today. And now I'll see it pull in actuals from the current month. And so here, um, there's a number of things that I can do from this point. I can basically see these are my budget estimates. Again, if I, if I feel like I'm off on a given month, I can go ahead and change them. Um, and I also see actuals that are pulled in for the month that's selected here. One cool thing here is that this calculates my estimated cash flow. And so it knows based on how these categories are set up and their type, you can see basically I only have one income type, the rest are all expense. And so it knows that um, when calculating my estimated cash flow, it's gonna take everything here, except for this 4,000, which is income, that's $1,615 of um, expense 
or, uh, or expense categories. Um, and then this is my only income category. So if I did, uh, you know, that's going to match up with this number here. So that's, that's my cash flow. And this basically means that if I'm not saving, if I'm spending all my money um, that I make in the month, uh, basically I have this much left over for all those categories I deleted earlier, my discretionary categories. Um, let's look at this line here. Right now we have some uncategorized transactions and this budget works best if you categorize all your transactions. So I'm gonna go over here and look and see if Tiller Money Feeds has pulled in any transactions that aren't categorized, here they are. So let's just make sure that these are um, captured here. Um, and now let's come back here. You can see now we've got no uncategorized transactions. And then also this is telling us what our discretionary spending has been so far. Es essentially this is spending within this period that is not in one of these categories. And if I, I highlighted uh, the expenses that are falling in, in this um, bucket, but you can see here, it's basically, oh, sorry. All right, it's basically these, that wasn't meant to be highlighted, we'll ignore that, but um, effectively just these three transactions, you can see they add to 225, but those are the, my discretionary expenses. And you can see that right now, they are well under my estimated cash flow. So my budget is healthy. I've still got space to spend. The last thing I wanna show you is um, this box, which tells me um, all, my, all my fixed and uh, non-discretionary expenses are captured here. And so I'm left with uh, quite a bit of money remaining. You can see over $2,000. And based on, on this, there's over, over 10 days left to spend this money. And so this calculation will help you understand that kind of on an average spending rate of $1,200 per week, we'll end up with net budget zero or we'll end up with savings if we don't spend that all. This drop down allows you to also show this on a kind of a daily basis. So you can kind of understand what you're on track for um, or on a monthly basis, which will basically just be these two things um, added together. The, this number will change as the month goes by because later in the month, um, there'll be fewer days and you'll basically have more to spend um, if, if there's fewer days to spread it across. Heather, is there anything you want to add to this? The only thing I would add is, um, you know, this, we built this sheet after the Level Money app was deprecated because we were getting a lot of folks coming, looking for other tools. And the way I think that that, you know, application kind of proposed people budget was that they, they only budget for their fixed expenses. So even things like groceries, which might be variable or coffee, which is definitely variable, like you wouldn't include here. But in the help guide that's hosted over on the community for this, you know, it does give you this workflow of like, if you want to make sure that you have a certain amount of spending available for those variable categories, definitely include them. So I think it's a good note to, to say that like, you know, when you're going to the grocery store, you don't need to look at that, like how much do I have to spend? Because you know, you've already blocked off that $500. Like you just, then you can just look at like, what is my actual so far? So that would be the only thing I would add. Great. Awesome demo. Thanks, Randy. So we got a few questions in the Q&A. Um, so we'll go ahead and take those. If you have other questions, please go ahead and get them over there in the Q&A. And we're happy to demo other things that we can demo quickly if you're curious about something else or if there's not a lot of questions, we'll, we'll wrap early. But just related to the spending money sheet specifically, um, Vineet, hi Vineet, asked a few questions here. Um, where does the estimated cash flow come from again? So do you, will you share again and just kind of explain that a little bit or re-explain that again, Randy? Yeah, I'm working on that one sec. Okay. Um, yeah, so estimated cash flow. The, the, the categories are set up in almost all Tiller spreadsheets um, in, in the category sheet. And here you can basically create your own categories if you want to make one called vacation. I don't think that's in the sheet. You can create a new category. Maybe that's discretionary. Um, and that would be an expense. What this sheet is doing is it's, is it's looking for each of these categories um, to determine its type in the category sheet um, and determining whether it's an expense category or an income category. In my sheet here, you can see that the only category I have is income is just this one paycheck. And so it's basically adding my budgets from every category that is expense, all of these, and then it's um, and then it's it's comparing that to my income, this one that is an income. And so you can see here again that 
the sum of, of these budgets, which are all expense, um, is 1615. Um, and then I have this one uh, income category that's 4,000. And when, when you subtract the 1615 from 4,000, you're gonna end up with this, this number. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> thanks, Randy. Vinit says thanks um, and asks, uh, typically how many days of lag are there between spending and tiller transactions appearing? I'm wondering how far behind the available spending money would normally be. That's a great question. Uh, it really depends on the institution. So typically when you use like a debit card, the spending can come over within the next day. It's not going to be real time, of course. There's, you know, our feeds are not real time, but my institutions, which are a couple small credit unions, um, are pretty fast. Like I've gone to the grocery store in the evening and then the next morning I see that transaction in my sheet. So I really think it depends on the institution. There are also other factors that may impact it. Like, you know, if you need to visit the console to refresh, if you have two factor authentication turned on, like that will be an extra step. Um, and then with credit cards, sometimes it, if you're using a credit card, it can be slightly longer delay just because oftentimes credit cards will post the transaction or like it'll show up as pending and then it'll go to posted. Whereas like a debit card, you know, from your bank account, your checking account, you have that money available. So it's, it just goes through a lot faster. So th that's a little bit of, you know, guidance on that question. Hopefully that helps Vineet. Um, any feedback on that, Randy? No, I think that makes sense. I think the only other thing is there is like a little bit of a, um, uh, a timing thing. I mean, most of the sheets are updating once per day, right, Heather? So if you just miss that window, um, I yeah. could bump it even if it got pulled in by um, by the, the bank uh, feeds. Sure, yeah. All right, Philip asks, if I change or modify the name of the category, the transactions all show an error because the category name is different after the change. How do I update the category name for all the transactions to the new category name? Is that something you can demo pretty quick, Randy? I was thinking of like sorting by the category column and then using the quick fill square. That would be my recommendation. I think it's pretty easy to demo. Uh, were you saying a filter, Heather? I mean, I, I generally just sort, but if you change like restaurants, for example, or something that's used in there a lot, we can kind of demo what that. Let's say um, we take this one here and we change this to eating out. And then we go into this sheet and we should see uh, all the red ticks by the word restaurant. I guess how I would do it personally is I would do um, a create a filter. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna edit the sheet obviously. Um, and then I would, I would clear, you can see right now it's filtering on kind of everything, everything's checked here. Um, so I would clear this so that nothing is checked and just do the ones that I wanted to see. So I'm gonna just check that. And once I press okay here, we're going to see just the restaurants. At this point, I can come in here and set this to eating out, the new name. And then just, you can see that it, that's accepted with the data validation. And then I would just drag this guy down. And then once I'm done with that, I'll turn off the filter. Um, so I think that's a, a pretty, pretty quick and easy way to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, any other questions? That was our last question. So unless anyone has anything else, we can wrap early. Um, one thought I had, Randy, it's, it's kind of cool with the new AutoCAT features or just the new version of AutoCAT. You could use AutoCAT to do it too. You know, you could have like a, what would you have? You'd have the category column and then if category, you'd have a category equals column maybe and then you put equals restaurants and then run it. I think the um, categorized date, you might have to, I'm not, that might get in the way, wouldn't it? Because you'd basically, I think you'd have to set it to. Um, I have to set it to run on all. Yeah, which could affect other transactions. True. It's the so, risk. I see. Yeah. Jason has raised his hand, but I'm not sure if that's a false alarm. I don't know. <laughs> Who was it? Bison? Bison. <laughs> uh, cool. Unless we see a question from Bison. All right, let's, let's, uh, I guess let's wrap then, huh, Heather? Sounds good. Thanks so much, Randy. And thanks everybody for joining us for this uh, community webinar today. And we look forward to seeing you at the next one for tags.
Chao, abrimos.